I like to use bubble diagrams and want to try them in AutoCAD. I like the bubbles to be representative of the room size. I can get this to work, but I like my bubbles to have a little flair to them, like shadow lines and that's where i get lost this is davis uh, file or drawing and from the properties you can input an area right for instance an area i don't know let's say ten thousand presenter and you can see that the circle is adjusting per the area so he got that right but he's having problem again with this shadow over here uh, so let's see how we can help our friend so i'm gonna go inside this block and simply remove that arc uh, i'm gonna delete that and i'm gonna draw another circle with a circle option or circle command press enter and i'm going to draw a circle from this uh, center point all the way up to here now i need to move that circle so i'm going to move it with the p option or or last option uh, pressing l and enter and now i need to move it uh, where i i uh, need to uh, where i well, it looks like a shadow, right? So I'm gonna move it somewhere around here, like so. Okay, now, so that's the shadow. Now, before I worry about masking this up uh, to show only the circle, I wanna test if this will work, right? If this will adjust. So what I'm gonna, use is i'm gonna use a geometric constraint over here from my ribbon um it's called equal so i'm gonna try that out see what happens i'm gonna select my original circle which is this one and then following instructions on the command line says select second object i'm gonna select my second object which i want to be the shadow and now uh, it was added a equal geometry constraint. So basically we read a bit, it says constrain two lines, polyline seg or, uh, segments to maintain equal length or arcs and circles to maintain equal radio values. And that's what we want. Now let's do a quick test. Uh, so I'm gonna click test block. And let's see what we get. So I'm gonna go to properties. Let's change the area to something like 500 maybe. And it's kind of working. Um, but um, let's see, let's test it one more time. Let's say 10,000. So, it's working but halfway there as you can see when we input a larger number um, you can see that the shadow uh, here on the circle starts getting lost right it's very very thin and that's not what we want <laughs> so so let's let's close the test block editor then let's try something else so let me close this and discard the changes let me try one more time going to the blog editor um, so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try one more time the equal um geometry constraint uh, using this circle and this arc so let me close the blog editor and save the changes to test things out so i'm gonna copy this block over here and let's see 
properties. Let's say if not that ten thousand by half uh, five hundred or me. Yeah, sure. So the arc it's following the circle area as you can see and it's keeping the distance also remember before uh, using a circle um, we had this shadow area skinnier and skinnier now uh, let's try to hatch this shadow area as this other block um, so what i'm gonna do is go back to the block editor and let's uh, so i need to use the hatch command but there is so much information here what i'm going to do is isolate uh, these two objects by using the isolate command and i'm gonna use the hatch command of course now uh, i'm gonna pick the solid because that's the hatch that david is using and in this case i want to use the pick internal points now an important part here is to make sure the associative um, option is checked so that way our hatch can follow um, so i'm gonna click here and press enter now this is, uh, you know, a challenging uh, test for the hatch because, again, this circle is constrained, uh, have some parameters also. If we unisolate everything using the unisolate command, you can see, again, this is a very complex block that our friend David created using our tutorial that we did uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, and he applied the same techniques to his um, to his personal work, right? In this case, this uh, area tag. But let's see if the hatch is going to follow now uh, when we update this information. Let's cross fingers, guys. <laughs> um, so the hatch is there now. Um, and let me go... Um, over here under properties and let's change um, this area to something like maybe 5,000 and press enter. And no, <laughs> we have a problem guys. You can see the hatch that is right there. It's still very tiny. It's not following the arc. It's not following the circle. So we have a problem. I have an idea so i'm gonna close the block editor so i'm gonna um, erase the hatch then and what i can do is okay i want to try something i'm gonna copy this to the side uh, something about 10 feet the distance doesn't really matter it's just so I know exactly where I moved it 10 feet and what I want to try is gonna, let's see if I can trim this circle okay great I can trim it all right so now these are um, arcs what i'm trying to do here is from my experience i know associative hatch will work with enclosed or selected polylines so what i'm gonna do is try to create a polyline using the join command and let me select that go to my properties make sure that that's a polyline that's great so now let's try to hatch this right using uh, the hatch command and in this case i'm not gonna use the big point but i'm gonna use the select objects so i'm gonna select the polyline make sure associative is selected 
and I'm going to press enter. So now let me try something. Before I move it back to the circle, I want to test it first. And how I'm going to test it is I'm going to add an equal constraint again, selecting my circle. Wait, let me refresh first, just throw it. So I'm going to use again the equal geometry constraint to select the circle. And then as a second object to select my arc or polyline right here, press enter. Well, not press enter, it automatically uh, does its thing. So I'm going to test that before I move it to the circle again. Uh, let's see, under properties, I'm going to change that to maybe 500, press enter. And you can see that the polyline with the arcs are scaling, but let me check the hatch. Great, the hatch is now associated with this polyline, which is great. So we are doing more progress. Let's see what happened when we move it back now to the circle. So let's close. Of course, we don't need this circle. I mean, this arc anymore, right? We don't need that. So let me move this polyline back 10 feet, press enter, and let's see, uh, let's test it now, test, as you can see, the hatch is right there, so let me change it to 900, and it looks like it's working, uh, let me see, let me see over here. Hmm. hmm, something weird is happening, right? <laughs> uh, it looks like it's working. Uh, let me test it one more time. Let me make it bigger. Press enter. So the hatch is associated now, which is nice for the shadow. But there is something there that is not doesn't look quite right. Why we have three different lines there? That's not right, <laughs> right? To better understand this, I'm gonna copy the block on the side and simply explode it. So that way I can better understand what's going on here. So, okay, that's the hatch. Let me erase the hatch. And as you can see, look what's going on. <laughs> All right, so let's select the circle. Oh, here is what's happening. So the circle, it's getting, or the shadow is getting in the way of the circle, as you can see, that's the shadow, and that's the circle inside the shadow. That's not right. <laughs> um, okay. So let me try something else. Um, now that I understand what's going on, uh, let's see over here. So since the circle is adjusting to match the radius of this arc over here, uh, because we used this equal geometric constraint, let's try the same but to match the other arc, which is this arc right here. So let's try that and see if that will fix it. So let me use the geometry equal constraint again. Select the circle, select the arc, not this one, but this one now. Select that and let's test the block. So I'm going to go ahead, go to properties, test it one more time to something like 9,000 and press enter. And beautifully, it looks like now it's scaling correctly. So I'm going to do a final test by simply closing the block and saving the changes. And a quick test, let's say 5,000 now, but 10,000. 
for the area and boom this is working beautifully guys so david here you have it so we have a membership where we help professionals to streamline their autocad workflows and here if you send your blog your drawing whatever you need help with um you'll find um the help that you need quickly and of course you'll have access to all of our blogs yep about 30 blogs about 40 macro commands and more